Hello everybody, welcome back to the 1.0 Expression series. We're finally at the mountaintop of the giants, meaning that from here on we're going to have a lot more options as to where to go next, as we now officially reach the end game-ish kind of territory of the game. Speaking of which, if you want to help decide which area is going to be after this one, either stay until the very end of the video or check the pinned comment down below. But yeah, let's get into it. The Knight Rider that drops the Phantom Slash is still here, but it's more obvious than ever that this just has normal enemy HP, because he got absolutely destroyed. The loot in this skeleton mouth that's normally a somber 7 is an albinoric blood clot in 1.0. We've already discussed this in the past, but the Black Splayed Kindred is playing Urtree Knights instead of Death's Kindred. Nothing seems different aside from that. In the rolled elevator, we get flashbanged for a solid 10 seconds before we can see again. I have no earthly idea this is supposed to be an intentional creative decision, but it sure is something that happened. I didn't find any differences with Shibri, and so he doesn't really have any other interactions, I just decided to kill him in this file. He uses Impaling Thrust in 1.0, but he never uses Ash of War in current patch, so I'm unsure if he's supposed to use Pursing Fang or not, but it's still different regardless. While well, we're talking about his weapon, this was very subtle and y'all may not even know, but I happened to notice that he's using the Uchigatana in current patch, when he uses Nagakiba in 1.0, and you might have noticed that they're in different hands too. Using Nagakiba makes sense, of course, but if we presume that you take Yura's Nagakiba when he dies, then it would make sense that Shibri has to use another weapon. He also didn't use any of the Frenzy Incantations, when that's his primary attack method in release. His death dialogue gets cut off before he can finish it, too. Until we meet again. Since this means Yura's quest is moot now, I went back to the second church to see about Eleonora, and, uh, she didn't spawn, which made me scared that the Mogwin Tear is locked behind his quest. Since I wasn't doing his questline, I wasn't going to do this in another character, but I just had to verify this. And yeah, sure enough, you need to do Yura's questline to get the tier, which is very unfortunate and glad they changed it for release. The tier does seem the same visually at least, we'll have to see if it works the same way when we reach a mug. I'll discuss all the other differences of Yura's quest in the full video after the series is done. Also fun fact, apparently if you come to the Mirage Tower from this angle, instead of from the foresty area, the illusion version of it will spawn again but not go away. So the building looks... weird. This is Samaya Truth shenanigans. The Zamora ruins are called Glace Ruins in 1.0. Same goes for the Grace. Zamora Ice Storm is called Blizzards of Zamora. And there's no Scarab in this tree with a Somber 7. When you enter the Giant's Mountaintops catacombs, the Flame Peak prompt comes up, kind of like that one dungeon in Altis, showing up in a place that has no business being. The Giant's Mountaintop Catacombs Grace is just called Mountaintop Catacombs. There's a Stake of America inside the dungeon, but it just takes you to the stake outside, so it's definitely a bug. The sites in this room ended up breaking after I died in here, and it seems to just break if I died any place in the dungeon. There's no Ridge Pot in this room. The frost effect from these pillars is a very slightly darker hue. This is a series first. We can't open a chest at all here, the one that normally has the Fire Monk Ashes. I'm unsure this means that that's not in there or that it is. This is Schrodinger's chest right now. The Tree Spirit boss started already overground, when normally it's supposed to dig out first. We sort of discussed this before, but it's playing the Grave Warden song instead of the Earth Tree Avatar song. I say sort of because I was playing a different wrong song before. After the boss, this chest with the Death Root unlocks, so I thought maybe it could unlock the other chest from earlier, but nope, it's still locked. Back outside, after the big bridge area, there's no scare with the Somber 8 below this stone stairway thing. The Ancient Snow Valley Ruins Grace is just called Ancient Snow Valley. Here's a very curious anomaly in Millicent's dialogue. I'm searching for a fort to the west of the ruins. I'm searching for a fort to the north of the ruins. Now, knowing a thing or two about scripts and retakes, to me this feels like a flub in the voice acting that somehow made it into the game. For a moment I thought it could have been more so that Millicent's final position was uncertain, but that shouldn't matter because unless the position of the Stargazer's ruins changed at some point, her relative position shouldn't matter. This is just a theory of course, and it's not a dig at the actress by any means. Whether the script was wrong or she just read it wrong on a take, Mistakes like this happen, I'm just amazed that both lines have been into the shipped disc. Also, if you remember the dialogue, you may have noticed that one of the lines is missing too. The one about the master of the fort. Which makes sense that it would be added since Melania isn't at the fort, but it leads to her. Upon doing some research, it seems that Latena's dialogue as you approach Castle Soul has either been cut or bugged out since like patch 103. Here's what it is if you haven't heard it Do before. You hear me? It is I, Latena. We're almost there. Castle Sol lies just off to the north, where the other medallion is housed. 
However, she didn't say it in patch 1.0 either, so I suppose it was added in day 1 patch. In the pile of golems, the smithing stone 7 is replaced by a Folger Bloom in 1.0. In the shack of the Lofty, which is called Warmat Hero Shack, there's no Traveling Maiden set. Here's the Mount Top Merchant Stock. Apparently there's more perfume bottles in 1.0 version that there are slots for them, which is kinda neat. This means that you don't have to go to all the very specific locations to get all of them. You can pick and choose or stumble upon enough of them naturally. There's unlimited spare flame arrows, which is very nice, along with the limited perfumers bolts. There's no unlimited lightning great bolts though, like in post-release. Doing the last of the Rakuzin invasion quests, Jido gets a lot closer to you before gesturing. He also uses quick step instead of bloodhound step, and he just doesn't hurt as much as he generally does. He still does bleed damage so he could catch you off guard, but his whips tend to hurt on their own on release. If you do this quest after killing Rykard, you actually won't get the reward like in release, so it'll be lost to you. But for the purposes of the video, I verified the item and it seems identical. The Snow Valley Ruins Overlook Grace is just called Runeville Clifftop. The somber 9 in this chair is just a Trina Lily. The Air Tree Avatar is still split in two, so besides the usual, one of the avatars did the animation like it was cloning again, but it didn't work. I'm sure this means that it can do that normally, but it certainly tried, I guess. The Helven Steeple's Ash of War is called Spectral Flame of Ruin, or Spire Sword, instead of Ruin is Ghost Flame. This Deathrite bird is finally a boss, but it's actually just called a death bird. Maybe it has something to do with it being able to spawn at daytime, and perhaps nighttime bosses just don't usually count for whatever reason. You can kind of choose it from this spot, but it's a little inconsistent. Moving over to Castle Soul, the Land Guardians don't drop anything when killed. They usually drop a Somber 7 and a few other things. The really dirty dual banished knight ambush was still a thing in 1.0, but there's no Cerulean Amber Medallion plus one after it, so it's kind of pointless coming here in this version. There's no Stormhawk Axe here either, but as we discussed, you can still get two from killing Nefeli. Commander Nile seemed exactly the same, except it's playing the Grave Warren theme instead of Old Warriors, and also the sound effects for a lot of his attacks are different. The particle effects and lightning were also very lacking. We got the Soul Sword painting in Castle Soul, so going to the proper spot. The Great Hood is called Esker's Great Hood, which, sure, I guess that's accurate. In the Spare Colors Cave, most of the items in this little cove are not there. And there's also no White Reed set here. The boss fight was identical, but they're playing formidable for one song instead of Godskin Apostle. Unfortunate. The item drops were the same, but it didn't drop crap for runes. The smithy stone 7 in this chair behind the America church is a golden centipede in 1.0. Once again, the heretical rise is called heretical glintstone rise in 1.0. One of the enemies in here was already stuck in a rock by the time I got here. Unsure if it's always like that. The founding reign of stars is called Goliath's reign of stars? Um, this is kind of big, right? I'll let y'all theorize what that means. I'm not equipped to do so myself. The Lord Contender's Evergel is called Consort's Evergel, which I guess works as well. The Urchery refuses all. Yes. Vike is named the Dragon Spear instead of Round Table Vike. He actually fights exactly the same as his invasion counterpart in 1.0 Liernia, including having two Flask's heals, which was wrong then, but it's mostly correct now, except for the two heals, I guess. The only thing wrong now is that it still uses the Frenzy Ash of War instead of Storm Assault, which I find less frustrating anyway, so I didn't mind. He still drops the Fingerprint Armor, but it's called Fingertip Armor. In the Guardian's Garrison, the Smithstone 7 is a budding cave moss, and the smoldering butterflies are golden bolts in 1.0. This segment of the map has a bunch of arrows that look like unfinished drawing indicators, but I can tell you for sure, it's just a guess. Bloodyfinger Okina is just named Okina when invading. You might notice that he's using the Bloody Slash instead of Corpse Piler, and that's because that's what Rivers of Blood has in 1.0, Bloody Slash, even though the description calls it Bloodstained Blade or Bloodrend. It's also a faith weapon in this version, but if you're looking to use it for its OP Ash of War, unfortunately you can't take advantage of it in this version. He also didn't drop his mask, so that's gone, along with the white reed set so far. There's no ancient dragon smithing stone in the giant skull mouth, the max level upgrade for the normal upgrade path, which means that the first max level upgrade that you can find outside of quest lines is missing. I'm kinda okay with that though, because it's only until you reach mountain top so you can consistently get the 7 and 8 stones, so it'll let you have to sit on plus 24 for a little longer. This one hand got stuck on terrain as it was trying to fall, I presume, and it made the game very laggy, which happens in current patch on occasion as well, if something clips into a wall. The smithing 7 below the hand is a Nia of Yellow 1.0. In the giant conquering hero's grave, you can still find Flame Protect Me behind the stone key gate, 
But apparently you can also get it from the Giant's Prayer Book in the Garrison. So I guess there's two options to get this in New Game. The Cranial Vessel Candle Stand is called the Hallowed Candle Stand. There's no Giant Seal in here, but I've already been told a handful of times that this is one of the seals that you have to farm. And it's from the Flame Monks. I believe it doesn't have to be one of these in here. It can be one of the ones in Lyurnia, for example. For the Samore boss, the Graveborn song is playing when it should be playing Archery Knights, but the fight seems the same. Going into the Fire Giant, I couldn't find Alexander's summon sign. I even went to check on him and he was still in Mount Gilmer, so I guess you don't summon him in this version. Either that or I just didn't find it in the room somewhere. The fights seem identical aside from the Flame of the Fell God that has a different look, which I kind of like to be honest. And when checking his remembrance, the Burn of Flame spell is called Wrath of the Fire Giant. Now finally, when Melina is burning the Earth Tree, there's no music playing at all. The normal music is very low key so it's not a huge change, but it's worth mentioning. You shall burn. And that is all for the video. Before you go, if you want to help decide which part's gonna be next, I will have a poll out by the time this video is out between if I should do Fire Missoula next or the Consecrated Snowfields. But be warned if you pick Consecrated Snowfields and it wins, I will be going through all the areas that are adjacent to that as well. So Mogwin Dynasty and the Halic Tree and such before I get to Fire Missoula. So if you want to see Fire Missoula now and then do all the Consecrated Snowfields thing, you should vote for that instead. But I should also say that I will be doing Ashen Capital as the very last thing, no matter what. Oh, and next week's video won't be 1.0, so I can let this pole breathe and stuff, but also just to shake it up for myself. Definitely starting to fear a little bit of a burnout, so I might give myself a week or two to do something else for a bit. We're definitely in endgame territory now, so you would expect that a lot of the major differences would be around this part. There are a couple I've heard about and I'm definitely curious to see because I haven't been to this part of the game in 1.0 much. If you're new, we have a whole playlist of parts we've already done for the series that I suggest checking out. We're definitely closing in on being finished with the series. And as I said in the video, we're actually going to be doing a big video after this series is done combining all the parts. But I will be touching up things that I missed and people are telling me out and such. So hopefully it's more complete as a result. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again. Take care everyone. Bye bye.